So, uh, yeah, just talking about the future. Um, <laughs> the, I, I think the most important point I want to make is that, what I referred to earlier, that we've realized that the, the true problem, the true difficulty, and where the greatest potential is, is building the machine that makes the machine. In other words, building the factory. Um, and really thinking of the factory like a product. Um, um, not, not sort of a hodgepodge of, of, of things that, that are bought, you know, where the machines are kind of bought from a catalog. But actually, just like we do with the car, um, you know, we don't try to create a car by ordering a bunch of things off a catalog. We, we design the car the way it should be, um, and then we make, uh, either we or with, with working with suppliers, make all of those individual components. Um, and there's almost nothing in a Model S that's in any other car. Um, and I think the same approach um, is, is the right approach to take when building the machine maker, uh, the, the, the factory. Um, I actually think that the potential for um, improvement in the machine that makes the machine is a factor of 10 greater than the potential um, on the car side. I think maybe more than a factor of 10. Um, and I've really come to appreciate that you know, over the last uh, two, three months in particular when I've sort of just been on the production floor all the time and, and sort of seeing things, you know, r running production personally at, at, a, at, a, at a detailed level. I don't, even have a, I don't even have a desk or an office anymore. I just basically, um, I'm just basically standing on the production floor and occasionally meeting in a conference room. Um, and, uh, and it's like, wow. Um, you know, I do, my, I do my favorite thing, which is apply physics first principles. It's like the best tool possible. And it's like, it's like wow, you know, when you think of a production facility on a fundamental level, for a given size of factory, um, the output is going to be volume times density times velocity. Um, so then let's, let's sort of look at our factory and say, OK, what, what, what is the density of useful to non-useful volume? It's, it's crazy low. It's like 2 or 3%. Um, if you look at volumetrically, not just on a, on a planar level, but volumetrically, it's literally 2 or 3%. Um, when you say car, car to non-car ratio, volumetric ratio, um, like, wow, OK, that seems like there's a lot of room for improvement. Um, and then uh, you say, like, velocity. Um, what is a reasonable expectation for the exit velocity of vehicles from the factory? Um, and at first, you may think that, say, the, some of these advanced car factories around the world are, are very good at making cars, and they may make a car every 25 seconds. And that sounds fast, but, but actually, if, if you say, well, the, the length of the car plus some buffer space is approximately five meters. Um, and so it's taking 25 seconds to move five meters. OK, that's 0.2 meters per second. Um, basically, um, you know, you're not much faster than a tortoise at that point. Uh, and you know, so it's like, wow, that, that really doesn't seem, that doesn't seem fast. Um, like how come you, uh, the, how come these factories like like a a slow a sort of slow walk would be approximately or slow to medium walk would be one meter per second, um, and and a, and a fast walk would be 1.5 meters per second, and the best car factories in the world are doing 0.2. I'm like huh, seems like you should be able to have cars exit at least walking speed. Um, this doesn't seem so crazy. Um, and, um, and then the, the, the density improvement, like there may be as much as an order of magnitude improvement in density possible as well, going from maybe 2 or 3% to 20 or 30% of the volumetric density being um, optimal. Um, and like you also think of it like, like a, the design of a modern 
system on a chip or a computer, um, and you say, if, if you look at, say, the, the complexity of the board, and you see how, uh, how close together the line traces are um, and how focused things are on clock speed um, and data transfer from RAM to, um, you know, um, say, a solid state disk or, or the internal CPU cache, um, it's like, wow, this is, there's crazy potential for improvement here. I think at least an order of magnitude uh, potential for improvement on production. Um, and so, so with, with, with less, like significantly less engineering effort, uh, we can make dramatic improvements to the machine that makes the machine. Um, I think that's like, this is, I think, I mean, I think like probably a lot of people will not believe us about this, um, but I'm absolutely confident that this can be accomplished. Yeah, there, there are opportunities we're finding all over the place. And as you start to, you know, shift some of the design resources that have been, you know, in, you know improving motor technology and power electronics or batteries and are, are working so hard to try and find tenths of a percent of efficiency gain or performance gain on those different systems, and, and when they start to go and look at the factory, they say, oh my gosh, you know, this is, this is crazy. You know, we can find, as you were saying, you know, easily tens of percent or 20, in some cases hundreds of percent efficiency gain that were sort of unheard of in terms of you know, what you could do in the design world. So the, the impact there is, is pretty phenomenal and, and quite close at hand. Yeah, so we're basically going to design a, design, design a factory like you design an advanced computer. Um, and in fact, I think use... Um, engineers that are used to doing that and um, have them work, work on this. Um, and I found that like once you sort of explain this to a first-rate engineer, they the light bulb goes on, they're like, wow. Um, as JV was saying, like they spend huge amounts of effort trying to, trying to get a fraction of a percent of improvement on the product itself, but, but actually that same amount of effort will yield an order of magnitude greater result if you focus on building the machine that builds the machine. And it's just that a lot of engineers don't realize that this is possible. They think that there's like a wall. They're, they're basically operating according to these invisible walls. Um, and uh, so we just need to, you know, we're, we're in the process of just going through and explaining those walls don't exist. Um, and I think it's going to be pretty amazing. Thank you.